Good evening. Welcome to our prayer meeting here at Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. Um, please join us in singing the hymn at the cross. of the Lord Jesus Christ from darkness to light and that's when we saw the light and we can follow the Lord who is the light of the world and now we're going to have our meditation from Pastor Alice Wright. It's good to be to be in the house of the Lord and to share this precious word for us to um, to study and at the same time for us to uh, understand what the Lord uh, wanted us to to hear and apply uh, in our lives at this uh, day and age. Um, so last week, I uh, was speaking on the uh, reasons for the resurrection, and uh, hopefully uh, that was a blessing um, to those who have heard and listened. And uh, this coming Sunday, uh, our deacon Enoch will be preaching in my absence. I will be at 
Tri-City Church, Faith Bible Church of Tri-City. All right, uh, before we start, why don't we uh, open up in a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless our time together. All right, let's, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you that you have uh, covered us with your grace and that you have uh, removed every obstacle uh, that would hinder us from coming to you. We praise you and thank you for your son, for the sacrifice of his life, uh, the shedding of his blood, his death and resurrection, in order to give us, Lord, uh, the promise of uh, sins forgiven and the hope of eternal life and your presence um, uh, as we uh, exercise uh, faith and trust in you on a day-to-day -day basis. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless um, our time together as we look into your word, we pray that you would uh, grant us uh, insight and understanding from um, our teacher, your spirit, and grant us, Father, the grace, even the strength to apply these uh, principles in our lives that we may, uh, Lord, uh, continually be changed and transformed into uh, the type of people or the kind of children you want us to be. We give you all the praise and the glory for this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, our study, our meditation tonight is, um, you'll, be, you'll find it in 1 Kings chapter 17, uh, verse, verses 1 to 7. It is um, uh, about Elijah, and I entitled this uh, A Lesson in Faith, uh, because I believe that every day we need to exercise faith or trust um, in God for everything that we face, for everything that we need, for everything that we desire uh, to be uh, for his honor and glory. So here, let's read um, 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 to um, 7. Reading now, Now Elijah the Tishbite was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, Ahab is the king of uh, the nation, uh, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, surely there shall be neither dew nor rain this year's except by my word. And so there, were, uh, there was no rain for three years. There was famine. And uh, verse 2, And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go away from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. And it shall be that you shall drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to provide food for you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and lived by the brook Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he would drink from the brook. Uh, verse 7, And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. All right? So... Uh, Yahweh, or the Lord, uh, commanded um, here uh, the prophet Elijah to go to the east of Jordan where he would find the brook uh, named Cherith, right? That is the name of the brook. And um, he was told uh, to follow uh, God's instruction and to stay there or to dwell there by the brooks uh, for a period of time. And the Lord made a promise that he, he did so, that he will provide him the food, the meat that he would need. And he would use the ravens uh, to sustain him. And we learned that Elijah did so. Right? Elijah believed. So I want you to... Look at the following passages, and here you will see how Elijah exemplified or shown us, you know, his uh, confidence or trust in God, his faith. And the first thing that we notice uh, in verses 2 and 5 is how Elijah demonstrated an unhindered faith, right? An unhindered faith. In other words... The Lord told him, instructed him specifically what to do. And you will notice he accepted the word of God without question. 
no ah, uh, but, why, how, none of that. So if you look at verse 2, it says, And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, and then look at verse 5. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. And then when he was instructed to go to the widow of Serapath, all right, again in verse 8, then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, verse 9, Arise, go to Serapath, which belongs to Sidon, and, they, and stay there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. And look at verse 10. So he arose and went to Serapath. You would notice that Elijah, without question, obeyed the Lord. It says, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord. An unhindered faith. How many times in our lifetime, in our Christian life, the Lord has spoken to us. Perhaps through his word, uh, while reading it, while meditating upon it, or through radio while we're driving or at home or on vacation, we're listening to Christian radio, or if we're reading a Christian book, and the Lord impressed, you know, uh, something of importance to our hearts and to our minds. Or if we're listening to a sermon or a Sunday school or a Bible study or a prayer meeting like this, where God has clearly spoken uh, through his spirit to our spirit for us to do something or to act on, uh, for us to exercise faith. How did we appropriate it? Or how did we react? Do we, like Elijah, accepted the prompting of the Spirit of God or accepted the clear instruction of, the, of God through His Word without second-guessing Him, without doubting Him? One of the pivotal uh, experience uh, in, in my life uh, I just want to share with you is um, when I received the Lord Jesus Christ uh, back in 1980, um, my, the one who shared the gospel, uh, the one who also discipled me, challenged me to exercise my faith by uh, committing one, one, one semester to the Lord. In other words, to give up my semester and join uh, a group of students like me, men and, and women, uh, on a short-term mission trip um, to Calamba Laguna in the Philippines in order to share the gospel. And that is through Campus Crusade for Christ. It's called, out, it's called a Stop Out Project. You, you stop um, and well, go out and, and share the gospel. And one of the things that the Lord impressed upon me uh, at that time uh, as, as a young believer, you know, um, my discipler um, shared with me uh, a verse. Uh, and that particular verse, uh, as a young believer, I will never forget it. This call, uh, Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will show you what? Great and mighty things. So if you turn with me to Jeremiah 33, so as a young believer, um, probably two weeks old in the faith, two to three weeks, um, he kind of, you know, challenged my faith and says, Alloys, you know what? Um, I would like you to join this, uh, sh sh you know, short-term uh, mission trip uh, in order to share the gospel. And at that time, I don't know how I would provide for my needs, three months, you know, food, lodging, transportation, and all that. And so that verse has called to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. So as a young believer, I don't know uh, about short-term mission. I don't know what to expect uh, uh, when you go there, uh, where we're going to live, uh, how much money do I need to raise, who are the people that I'm going to go to in order to raise these funds. This, this is something very new to me. And so... You know, my disciples said, you know, Alloys, you have to trust the Lord. 
Because if the Lord is really challenging you to go, uh, He will stretch your faith. Not only He will stretch your faith, He would strengthen your trust in Him. Uh, you would see and experience things that you will never experience if you stay in the university for this semester. So, um, uh, uh, I was just, uh, I just told my parents uh, at that time that I'm a born again believer after becoming a communist, uh, a student uh, uh, involved in student communism. And now they heard that I'm a, I'm a believer, I'm a born again Christian. And so they thought that uh, I just lost it. And so uh, this brother in the Lord prayed with me and, and my uh, Bible study group. Um, and then the Lord uh, truly and, and clearly impressed to me that I should go. And I have to raise a certain amount of money in pesos in order to sustain us. And I don't know anybody um, who are born-again Christians that would help me. So I went to some of my relatives, and when they found out that it's more of uh, 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 not towards our own religion, you know, they said, uh, uh, no, um, uh, we cannot help you uh, because I think you're, you're involved in a cult. And, and so I have about um, uh, a month, a month and a half to, to raise the funds. And so he gave me names. And I would remember I would, you know, take the bus, jeepney, tricycle. I would go from one place to another, a house or houses, offices. And then for the first time, I will meet these people. And I would, you know, I, you know, I was introduced to them um, by way of my discipler. And, um, and give them a solicitation letter. And then they will tell me to come back. They'll pray about it. And lo and behold, in less than a month, I exceeded uh, the funds uh, that is needed to go on a short-term mission. And we went on a training, and we were told of what to do. And so that is a pivotal, uh, pivotal uh, experience in my life because I learned in an unrestrained uh, faith, our unhindered faith, uh, that fully trusts His Word, that fully places His faith in God, in God alone. God will do the miraculous. God will do the impossible. And all I need to do is to, to go. All I need to do is to trust His Word. And so even before the deadline, um, I was the first one who was able to raise, you know, that amount and even exceeded it. And my companions who are born-again Christians for a while, and uh, they've known uh, a lot of Christian friends and families because they belong to a Christian church, and they have uh, brothers and sisters and parents who would refer them to their Christian friends or family. It was so ama amazing that when I shared this story that, you know, the favor of God uh, was really not only upon me but also upon them. And so uh, this strengthened my faith. The Lord uh, used this uh, experience for me later on to trust Him for bigger things, to trust Him for that which are impossible. Secondly, um, here you will you know, see the unhindered faith of uh, Elijah. He went without question. He accepted the Word of God uh, as truth. He, he believes that God's Word is reliable and that God is trustworthy. The second thing is that you will notice the unflinching faith of uh, Elijah. It did not, you know, flinch at all in the presence of uh, a difficult, uh, severe uh, situation. Um, if you go back uh, to that passage in, in 1 Kings uh, chapter um, 17, you will notice it says there will be neither dew nor rain all those years. So you're talking about famine. You're talking about drought, extreme drought. And then where are you going to get food and drink during those times? And you'll notice God said, go to the brook of Cherith. The Lord personally hid Elijah from the wrath of Jezebel and this evil king Ahab because uh, Jezebel was responsible 
um, and Ahab, even though he's the king, uh, I would say he's under the, uh, you know, um, authority and fear of uh, his wife because uh, he went along uh, with her evil desire. She's responsible for the persecution of the prophets. Uh, and so here you will notice that in the presence of, in, uh, of this uh, difficult uh, situation, um, he believed God, he trusted God, that God will take care of him, that God will protect him uh, from uh, this evil plans of Jezebel and including Ahab. Um, and the people at that time uh, started to turn to idols. They turned their backs from God, from Yahweh. And so here you notice that when he trusted God and the Lord promised to him that he will take care of him, that he will fill, feed him, it, hasn't, it hadn't happened yet. And yet, Elijah's faith did not flinch, right? So when the Lord told him to go to his next assignment in verse 8, uh, verse 9, to go to Seraphath, all right? He exercised the same unflinching, unhindered faith, that trust in the Lord, knowing that all will be well. And we know, just from reading this, that things went well for Elijah in terms of, you know, sustaining him uh, throughout the day, uh, providing food, sustenance for his body, providing rest in that uh, place of seclusion where God hid him. And then we also know the story about, you know, the, the woman, uh, the widow in Seraphat, where the Lord provided for that empty uh, small amount of oil, and the Lord multiplied it through Elijah and how you know, the woman and his son uh, not only lived, but used that money, all right, uh, to sustain them for a number of years. And so what we can der derive here is that when the Lord told Elijah to go, all right, to the brook of Cher Cherith and to uh, the place of Seraphath, he not only exercised the same faith, but God's promise really happened, right? It did happen. Look at that. It says what? Verse 4, and it shall be that you shall drink of the brook, all right? Uh, you can last without food. I mean, you can last without food, but you cannot last without water. Water will last you for a number of days, uh, seven weeks or, I mean, seven days or more. But it says here, and I have commanded the ravens to provide for you there. If you stay there, if you go there, you will be provided. Now, look at this. The ravens would brought him bread and meat in the morning and also what bread and meat in the evening. And whenever he finds himself thirsty, he would drink from the brook. So what can we learn from this? Here's the third one. It is an, hum, an a humpered faith. His faith did not stagger in this apparent improbabilities, right? Improbabilities because, first of all, how can you instruct, it's humanly impossible to train and instruct ravens, right, to bring you food. It takes a while to train a dog, tricks. It takes impossibility, you know, it is impossible for the ravens to go back and forth morning, probably noon, and before evening to bring food. Probably the same time, the same, you know, um, uh, parameter uh, in terms of, 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 of time. And only God can do that, right? That is impossible. And yet, his faith was not hampered, did not stagger at all in this apparent improbabilities. Being fed by the raven is a very, very strange phenomenon. 
all right? Even magicians or those who uh, are part of the circus um, staff, it takes a while to train animals uh, to perform tricks, all right? But all Elijah has to do or had to do was to simply believe God. And God will take the impossible possible. Isn't it? That's what God told uh, Mary uh, in, you know, in, in the gospel that he said what is impossible to God. I mean, what is impossible to men is possible to God. So the fact that God told him to stay there and you will be fed and instructed the raven, you know, to go back and forth, to fly back and forth, to supply his bread and meat, all right? It, how could a raven produce bread? How could a raven produce and carry meat? We don't know. But somehow, God said that those raven, all right, Let me go back to verse 17, where he said they will bring him uh, morning, night, bread and meat. So ravens, there must be many ravens who brought bread and who brought meat. Of course, you will not eat an uncooked meat. You would prepare for it and, and eat it. But the fact of the matter is that he believed God's word. So here's my point. What is it that the Lord is telling you and telling me to believe in something that you and I think that it's impossible to happen? What is it that you and I are going through right now where God is telling you and me to go to his word Claim a promise or two and recite it back to him and tell him that this is your word, this is your promise, and that your will be done. What is it? And God says, if it is according to his will, right, he will do it. That's what he said. Isn't it? That's also the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. To those of us, right, John chapter 14, it says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. He said, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. The second thing that is... Uh, pivotal in in my Christian life uh, is uh, there are two instances where we plan for a mission trip and um, we plan for it uh, together with a brother in the Lord and for some reason uh, you don't have uh, the means and it's only about a week and we were part of the church plant in Oakland and so uh, a sister in the Lord called us, and this is just a week before we leave, and mentioned to us that, um, you know, she forgot to, to give uh, her faith promise uh, to the Lord. And on top of the faith promise, uh, she found out that, um, you know, we would be going to the Philippines on a short-term mission. And nobody knows then our situation that we don't have the means, the airfare, to go. And the Lord answered that which we think is impossible to one lady, to one sister in the Lord. Another third experience in, in our lives, um, it was in 2003, we were planning for the short-term mission to the Philippines, a medical dental outreach and in that same year, uh, Marianne's dad passed away, December, in the Philippines. And um, the following year, 2004, uh, my mom was diagnosed with 
uh, multiple myeloma cancer uh, was given you know, a few months to live, and that was in March. And then uh, for 14 years, we've been praying for a child. And a month later in April, we found out that uh, uh, May was pregnant. And all those times, we thought that we will never have any child. So not only the Lord has given us, you know, a child that same year when that she got pregnant, Marianne, April, and our firstborn was uh, uh, came out uh, on November, and then every almost every two years, uh, you know, she will get pregnant. There are people, women, couples who have never been given the opportunity to have a child. There are those who have given one precious child or two. There are those who use the technology, the medical technology of in vitro fertilization. But God in his mercy and goodness, uh, what seemed impossible for us waiting for 14 years, the Lord gave us, you know, not just one, he gave us four. Another turning point in, in our Christian life uh, together as so a husband and wife was Again, we were planning for this short-term mission, and May got pregnant uh, Mar uh, April, and we're, the mission is in May. Everyone from Faith Bible Church of Oakland, all the way from, you know, friends from Vallejo, uh, even here, um, our friends, uh, fellow pa uh, pastors were saying, you know, May shouldn't go because it's her first uh, pregnancy, and it's the first trimester. Uh, there is a bigger, you know, chance for her to have miscarriage. And it's, you know, summer in the Philippines, it's hot. And we have to travel by means of, you know, uh, public transport, uh, transportation. And May, uh, when we went, you know, May was surrounded with people who have diseases because she's in charge of dispersing uh, the uh, medicines, uh, the pharmacy aspect of our outreach. And so, before we went, you know, people were saying, no, don't go, you know. Um, even our family, uh, because again, if something happens to that child, we will be held responsible. We would be labeled as, you know, rebels or disobedient, right? But we never, you know, since it was planned in 2003 and May wasn't pregnant, uh, we just found out the following year, uh, April, and then we're leaving uh, May, God never, impress upon our hearts that we should postpone or cancel the mission trip. It was clear that God will do the miraculous. And so the Lord, so we went, we obeyed against, you know, the advice, good, good advice of people because they care for us. And uh, we met uh, those of our friends and missionaries and members of those churches, and they were glad, you know, that May is pregnant, uh, They've been praying for us, all of them. Uh, and then we came back, and the Lord protected the child in her womb. And, you know, our firstborn uh, came in, in November. I mentioned to you those improbabilities. We also have, don't have the means, uh, uh, the right amount uh, to go to the Philippines. But time and again, you know, when you and I completely place our hope and our trust in the Lord and believe not only in his promises, but believe that he is, that he is God. Hebrews eleven six that says that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And so from those experiences, our, our faith grew and, 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 and strengthened over the course of, of this many years. Another thing that I would like you to, to notice is that Elijah's faith was very prompt in obedience, very prompt. Just like when the, angels, uh, the angel announced to the shepherd about the good news of Christ's birth, you know, and, they said, and, and the, 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 the word of God says, and they went in haste. They immediately went. They immediately obeyed. Just like uh, what happened to um, 
the experiences of uh, the apostles and uh, the followers of Jesus Christ, both in the Old Testament, I mean, in the New Testament, the follower of God, uh, the patriarchs and the prophets in the Old Testament, uh, they're examples of when God commanded them or instructed them, and the commands are really imperative. It has to be, you know, obeyed immediately. You know, the reactions or the actions of the recipient of the command is always immediately, or, you know, they went, or they went in haste. And here, you know, again, it says, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord. Look at that, verse 5. His faith was prompt, was, you know, uh, right away in obedience to God's word. Then you would see the unimaginable promise fulfilled. All right? So the ravens, day by day, every morning, every Afternoon towards evening, they would brought him food. And when he found himself thirsty, he would just simply drink from the brook. That's what happens when you and I immediately obey. The improbable, you know, the unimaginable, as promised by God to those who are obedient will be fulfilled, will be fulfilled. Again, I remember, you know, what my parents told me when we told, when May and I told them that, you know, I would quit my job, and, and it's, as I'm, you know, you're aware of it, it's a very high-paying job, uh, best perks and benefits. Uh, it's a six-figure job. And, um, you know, my, my parents says, uh, are you crazy? You would, you would turn and beg for food. You'll become beggars because they didn't understand uh, that God has placed in my heart and in May's heart uh, before and after we got married that we will be in full-time ministry. And so uh, the natural man, uh, the concept of... of um, provision and even success in, in life, whether it's personal business or career, is that you work hard and then you save. And if you have a, you know, a, a good paying job, don't leave, stay. But that's not what the Lord told me and my would-be wife. That has been in my heart ever since I came to know the Lord. And it only happened 10 years uh, from the time that I got saved that I you know, quit my job and went into full-time ministry. It's only then when I realized the improbables and the unimaginable, the miraculous happened, and we both experienced those things. Just like Elijah, you know, we were uh, fed, we were provided. The Lord never lacked in all these 30 years that we've been together, that we've been in the ministry. The Lord... For all this 18 years that we have children, never lack in supplying the needs of our families. Even in this church, I've been in this church since the 80s. Uh, been in this church, uh, involved in, you know, uh, planting, help planting churches. And we have witnessed how the Lord uh, provided and sustained and how he protected the testimonies and the people and the workers of those churches, including the mother church. How many times we find ourselves that we are in the red, that we don't really have sufficient amount to um, operate the, the ministry of the church um, and even the support of the missionaries. But the Lord never failed in meeting the needs of our ministry, our missionaries, the needs of the staff, and the need of his people. He always provided you know, people that would give generously and sacrificially. He would always provide, you know, visitors, unbelievers to come in contact with the ministry of this church and they would turn, you know, their lives around and, and receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. He would always raise up men and women that would be trained in order to what? 
in order to help equip the saints from this church and the other churches that the Lord planted through this church. God has never failed us. And then lastly, you will see the uncompromising faith of Elijah. Look at verse 7. His faith never wavered nor failed, not when the most severely tried situation. It says, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Verse 7. Elijah trusted the Lord all those times until the word of the Lord was finally fulfilled that there had been no rain in the land. And that's when the following chapter, he went and confronted Ahab and, you know, Jezebel. And there he performed the biggest, you know, the out, you know, I would say uh, the most impossible that you and I could ever imagine uh, where the rain came down and consumed I mean, the fire came down and consumed, you know, the offering of Elijah. Uh, but the Baals and Asherah, uh, the idols, the, um, the gods of, uh, of uh, Ahab and the nation of Israel, they cried out and, and their offerings were never consumed. And so God performed the miraculous. So what can we learn? You know, that whenever God places on difficult situations and we find ourselves in most severely tried situation just as we have trusted God for our salvation just as we have exercised faith in accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior we must learn to, to trust God absolutely we do not know that Elijah had ever performed any kind of miracle before appearing in front of Ahab because it, we were never told. It was God who performed those miracles, right? He had stood before God and knew the power of God, but now at the brook of Cherith where God asked him to, to hide himself, right? And also when God commanded him to go to the widow at Serapath, the widow's house, we learned that Ahab never wavered in his trust in the Lord, right? The situation of the widows, that was their last meal and they were thinking they would die. That is difficult to be confronted with that situation. But Ahab, I mean, but Elijah trusted the word of God. And so the lesson we need to learn is that we are, if God places us in a situation or if God places us where he wants us to be. Remember this. He will also provide what we need. He will also sustain us, sustain our faith, not to waver. He will also provide the means to protect us. So, beloved in the Lord, it was at the brook of Cherith that the ravens would bring, brought food to Elijah. And God told him, I commanded the raven to feed thee on that place, not in some other place, not in some other place, but the ravens would bring you food there. So if God placed us in a situation, if he was the one who placed us in that difficult, hard, severe situation, it means that God will meet you there. God will meet you at a place where he placed you, not in other place. That means if we are in need of something, we are not to go to other places or to other people to secure the answer to our need because that's not God and that is not God's means. So what God is saying, obey Stay there, I'll meet you there, and I'll provide for you there. Not in some other place, because that's where the raven flew and brought food 
to Elijah. That's where the brook flowed so that he could drink. So if you are where God wants you to be, he will work a miracle rather than see you go deeper in trouble. If you are a situation right now where you are asking God, crying out to God to help you, stay there, completely trust him. He will meet you there. He will not allow, he said, you know, in the Bible says, he will not allow the righteous to be moved. Psalm 55, verse 22. Psalm 55, verse 22. This is one of those verses that I normally claim and place my trust in his word. Cast your burden upon the Lord. Verse 22. Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. There you go. Not only that, he will never allow the righteous to be moved. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. So, beloved in the Lord, if you are where God wants you to be, he will work a miracle on your behalf, and he will not allow you to perish or not allow you to be moved or to be shaken. He will send out his help. It could be through people. It could be through situation. It could be through things. We never know, but he will always provide the manna. the manna that you and I need, the supply. So think about, think about these thoughts, upon these thoughts. The God watches over us, is aware, very much aware of what you and I are going through. And he has a full supply of what we need. He's aware of what you and I are going through, and he has a full supply in providing every need. He may sometimes use, you know, the improbable, the impossible in order to meet our needs. All we have to do, just like Elijah, we need to stay on. We need to stay focused. We need to, you know, cling on and have faith in God to trust him for all our needs. God will never fail us. So in closing, remember I told you about a family who called me two Sundays ago about a dying loved one at San Leandro Hospital. Um, so I was in a board meeting, and so right after the board meeting, my family and I drove there, and I met the dying person. Uh, he's already incapacitated, uh, no movement, uh, all the tube and life support uh, uh, attached to him. Uh, two of his sons were there. His stepson is there, and the, you know, uh, you know, uh, wife or living person was there. So I shared the gospel with him, whispering, and the nurse and the, you know, the, the son noticed that his eyelid moved twice. It never, any part of his body never moved. But so when I was sharing the gospel and, you know, asking him to for, for forgiveness from the Lord, and asking him to asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be Savior and Lord of his life before he passed, his uh, eyelid moved again. And so I'm hoping that he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. So I was able to give the Lord the opportunity to share the gospel to the members of the family. So I came back there two times before he passed. So that uh, day I, was, I received a call uh, that he uh, passed away, and, and then there was a short memorial the following day. Um, and... The reason I share this with you is because I was also praying about a particular need. Uh, in fact, um, the Lord moved me to give uh, an amount to, to the family uh, the second time I went there. Uh, just to uh, uh, be of comfort to them. Uh, not just the, you know sharing the word, the gospel, praying for them, but also a tangible means to so somehow let them know that God cares for them. So I, I gave the money to 
the live-in wife. In, in fact, you know, uh, she was returning it. Uh, the son came over and was giving me several, I think, $100 bills, but I, I didn't accept it. So I, to make the long story short, Friday, uh, I, I did the funeral, uh, a quick one, 20 minutes. On my way, uh, the stepson, you know, uh, went and ran towards the parking lot when I was about to leave and gave me a, a card, uh, a thank you card. So didn't open it, uh, didn't open it the, the following day and just found out that I was given an amount, four times the amount I gave them. And this is the amount that I needed for my faith promise for missions. And so I tell you all these experiences because uh, whenever you and I place completely our trust and our faith on God, God, for the most part, would reciprocate it with his unending supply in meeting our needs. He is a caring father. He loves us immensely. And he would always come true for our sake. All he asks on a daily basis is for us to trust him. Just Elijah, just like Elijah. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can learn from the example of Elijah, a lesson in faith and how you have um, beyond words and beyond imaginations, Lord, um, came true for him and how you have done that uh, in, each, in every one of us, Lord, uh, throughout our, our Christian life and, and even the, the, the future. We know that uh, in the days to come, uh, you will be there, Lord, uh, to always meet and provide and supply our needs. May it be possible, may it be improbable. What is impossible to you is always possible. Lord. What is impossible to us, it is always possible to you. So, Father, we believe you. We trust you. We praise you as our loving Father. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, beloved in the Lord, uh, at this time, uh, we would uh, go through our uh, prayer items and praise items. We would collect each of those uh, prayer, prayer requests and praise items. And so you and I can switch to our Zoom, where we usually uh, gather and, and um, share our praise item and prayer requests. So... Uh, we invite our members who are watching us via uh, our Facebook page to go through your Zoom app and uh, go through your go through your Zoom app and join us as we share our praise item and prayer request. Okay, so uh, let's start with those who are in this room in this sanctuary.